I'm Philip Russom, the Research Director for Data Management at TDWI. And today I'm joined by Krish Krishnan. He's the CEO of Sixth Sense Advisors. Krish is a successful BI and data warehousing consultant with many years of experience under his belt. And he's, recent, he's done some recent work involving uh, helping users get business value from big data. And in fact, Krish will be sp uh, talking about that very topic at an upcoming TDWI forum uh, on emerging technologies for big data analytics. That forum is coming up November 12th and 13th in Orlando, uh, co-located with the TDWI World Conference, e Conference there. So to give you a glimpse into uh, uh, Krish's presentation at the forum, he's agreed to uh, share some of his expertise with us today. So Krish, welcome. Thank you, Philip. Pleasure to be here. Yeah, always good to see you. So let me start with a question. Uh, big data, very briefly, what is that? Uh, simple definition, data that is voluminous enough, complex enough, that cannot be processed by current information architectures is what big data is all about. So it can be defined as a size problem, a scalability problem, a complexity problem, or just simply a data problem. And other people define it as like a, a speed problem. We talk about streaming data, mm -hmm. and that's, that's big as well, right? It is uh, big in terms of size. Mm -hmm. So in that equation, speed becomes an issue as you have to inspect data on acquisition, and you're getting data at a higher velocity yes. than you're used to. So it's not micro-batched, it's not batched, it's not mm -hmm. nightly processed, and it could be classified as a size problem in big data. Ah, very good. Um, <coughs> well, what about analytics? Um, I think uh, people are looking at big data and saying, well, it seems like a big problem to me, mm -hmm. uh, just the uh, cost of storage, et cetera. So uh, where's the business value? How do they, how do they find some true value for the business, some kind of return on investment? Oh, that's a, that's a wonderful question. Um, analytics, if you would, is a finite structuring of mm -hmm. any kind of information. Yes. So it is putting a metric and a measurement on top of information and quantifying it. Mm -hmm. So in terms of uh, big data business value, uh, a simple contextualization would be uh, Twitter posts about sentiments mm -hmm. on products and services of organizations. When any organization is able to harness that data and identify the product key or the service key and the location and the sentiment of the user, they can simply figure out you know, what is the amplification by meaning how many followers did this user influence by his sentiment and how many echoes were there uh, you know, reverberating for that particular sentiment. And typically those kinds of insights are very valuable for business, especially in today's competition. Right, mm -hmm. and that is where, going back to your earlier uh, question a couple of minutes ago on streaming data, that is where this kind of uh, data becomes a challenge to process, right? Yes. Because one is it is you know, coming at high velocity, second is you do not know what is the subject about, and third is you don't know what the contextualization of the subject about. But in the end of the day, analytics proves uh, a simple ground because you can do your counts and amounts and you could just uh, quantify those sentiments and attach business value to it. All right, very good. So uh, can you give us a few examples of what kind of information nuggets uh, we might expect to find uh, in big data? In big data, oh, that, uh, there's, there's quite a few. Yes. Right? So for a company uh, that is a large manufacturer of devices, a forum post can simply enlighten them on customer loyalty and customer satisfaction with the usage of their device. Whatever the device may be, you could, do, you could be the best washing machine manufacturer mm -hmm. in the country, and you might have very dissatisfied customers because your product is underperforming. Your product has too many service calls. Your product is not doing its you know, promise, delivering its value. So those kinds of nuggets, which definitely are not going to be available even in call center transactions, right? Those kinds of information can be parsed. Uh, simple things like website behavior. Mm -hmm. How effective is your website? You know, are you engaging your customer? Are you providing your customer that information that they're looking for when they come to your website? It's a challenge for an e-tailer because web commerce is the biggest channel. I mean, today you're having browsing from a device that includes your smartphones, right? So is that interface providing the right clicks? Are the customers getting the information in the most minimal clicks? Are you guiding those navigations? That kind of information comes from click stream. Mm -hmm. Those web clicks provide a lot of such information and that, that log is often called customer behavior, right? So if you look mm -hmm. at some of the algorithms available in open source today, you can do some of these things out of the box. Things that weren't possible a few years ago, today are, uh, are much more feasible. There is still a lot of work that needs to be done, but those are kinds of examples where companies are engaging big data to get insights. That's great, good examples, and it seems to me all of those can be linked to 
some sort of lift in revenue. It seems mm -hmm. like anything you do to understand the customer better, uh, including their behaviors, preferences, et cetera, can uh, help you to retain them, yep. to grow the account. Also, uh, some of the stuff you mentioned is more uh, along the uh, lines of uh, understanding operations, so you can gain mm -hmm. greater efficiencies, mm -hmm. help work on the bottom line Absolutely. to reduce cost. Does that make sense to you? It does. So, uh, if, if we were to quantify what a CIO or a CFO, mm -hmm. in fact, a more appropriate um, audience, you know, for understanding the business value of a big data would uh, need to get from is how do I reduce my overall PCO? So by assuming that you're getting more data, you're not increasing your cost. You're actually going to decrease your cost because you can improve efficiencies like just how you uh, mentioned about streamlining operations, streamlining logistics, right, inventory replenishment, the ability to get more customer affinity, the ability to get better competitive in insights, right, by just doing demographic analysis of how products and uh, services are being used, not only by the organization that's providing it, but by the competition too. So a target can look at how uh, a Coles is behaving. For example, you know, using mm -hmm. you know competitive research data, uh, a person who's um, a dealership that's selling Mercedes-Benz, for example, can figure out if their positioning right across an Infinity dealership is causing them, uh, you know, revenue leakage. Are people just going across to Infinity because they're getting a better quality of a car? I mean, those kinds of Things that actually are, you know, a physical action in the world that we live in, that cannot be modeled into a system and cannot be predicted, those insights, right? They are all invaluable when you start quantifying them in terms of money. Again, very good examples. And uh, also, I want to just thank you for sharing your expertise with us today. And you're going to share more of it uh, when we get to the forum in October, in uh, November. So, folks, uh, to hear more from Chris as well as our other speakers. Uh, please uh, visit our website to get more information. That's TDWI.org. Click on a forum or uh, click on the World Conference for our Orlando event in November. And uh, I hope to see you there. And uh, thank you for listening today. Thank you, Krish. Thank you, Philip. We'll look, we'll look to see you in the conference. Thank you.